Hey there, uh, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss the skeletal muscle contraction. Uh, remember, skeletal muscle contraction can be also asked as the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction, or it is also called as the sliding filament theory, or it is also called as the cross bridge theory. In any way, it can be asked. In order to understand the skeletal muscle contraction, we have to understand one more process which is occurring prior to the skeletal muscle contraction, and that is called as the excitation contraction coupling. I have already made a video on that topic. Please have a look at that video very quickly and then come back to this topic so that you can understand it in a better way. And to understand the skeletal muscle contraction, you will also need to understand the structure of all these proteins which are present within the sarcomere. That is the structure of the myosin, the actin, the troponin as well as the tropomyosin. So have a look at these structures and then when you come back to this video, it's going to be very, very helpful. So let's begin the skeletal muscle contraction or more aptly called as the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction so skeletal this theory is also called as the sliding filament theory and this was proposed by a e huxley and h e huxley i hope i am pronouncing the names properly so what is happening here is that there is going to be sliding of the thin filaments over the thick filaments okay the thin filament as we know is the a combination of actin uh, troponin as well as tropomyosin but remember that there is no actual shortening of the filaments. The filaments are not shortening. What is happening is one filament is sliding over another filament. So the thin filaments, they are pulled towards the center of the sarcomere. And uh, what is it which is pulling the thin filaments towards the center of the sarcomere is that the thin filament and the thick filament, they are linked by what is called as the cross bridges. And these are the cross bridges which are belonging to the thick filaments or to the myosin. That is why sometimes even it can be asked in the exam as the cross bridge theory. So if they ask cross bridge theory or if they ask the sliding filament theory or if they ask you to explain the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction, everything is same. So as I told you, this is called as a cross bridge theory. So first let's figure out what is the meaning of this word cross bridge. So this is how is the arrangement of the thick filament and the thin filament in a sarcomere. So this what you are seeing is the thin filament and this is the thick filament. Thick filament is exclusively made out of myosin, right? So this part of the myosin, what you are seeing here, this is called as the body of the myosin, okay? Now extending from the body, are these arms what you are seeing is these arms and these arms are in turn attached to this globular portion which is called as the head so what are these is that the part of the body of the each myosin molecule okay the part of the body of the each myosin molecule is going to protrude out okay so that part of the body which is protruding out this portion is what is called as the arm and this arm is ultimately attached to this expanded portion at the end and that is what is called as the head so that means the part of the body of the each myosin molecule is protruding out and ultimately it is also attached to the head of the myosin so this arm plus the head taken together is what is called as a cross bridge that is what is called as the cross bridge so that means the cross bridge is a part of the myosin so this is protruding out now there is an arm and at the end there is a head so there are usually two heads for the myosin which is present in the skeletal muscle that's why this myosin is also called as the myosin 2 okay now one more thing we have to understand here is that each of this cross bridge is flexible at two points it is flexible at two points like this is the cross bridge which is extending out and then it is ultimately attached to the head of the myosin this is the body of our myosin so these are protruding outside so each of this cross bridge is flexible at two points so what are those two points one is where this arm is attached to the body this portion and another is wherein this arm is attached to the head so these two portions are what are what is called as the hinges they are called as the hinges so flexibility means the movement of the myosin is possible at these two points and these two points where the movement is possible these are called as the hinges i hope the concept regarding the cross bridge of the myosin is now very easy for you so a cross bridge of the myosin is having one arm and it is having one head and each cross bridge is having two flexible points one where the cross bridge is attached to the body of the myosin another one is where the arm of the cross bridge is attached to the head of the myosin so these points where the cross bridges are flexible these are called as the hinges and what is going to happen at the hinges the movement is possible at the hinges hinges are basically like the joints now next let's understand 
the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction with the help of this very important single diagram. So, always we should start with that point wherein the muscle is in a relaxed state. Okay. So, as I have told you, what is this? This is a thick filament and this is the body of the myosin. Okay. That's the body of the myosin. So, this portion which is protruding out from the body and this is the head of the myosin. This, this is called as the arm of the cross bridge and this is called as the uh, not the body, this is called as the head of the cross bridge. This is called as the head of the cross bridge. So, this arm and this head taken together are forming the cross bridges. Now, as we all know, the head of the cross bridge or also called as the head of the myosin is having two very important attachment sites. One is it is going to attach to the ATP. Okay. One is it is going to attach to the ATP. Second is it is also having the attachment site for the actin molecule. Okay. Third very important point regarding the myosin head is that it is also having what is called as intrinsic ATPase activity. It is also having intrinsic ATPase activity. So, now what is going to happen in a relaxed state is that the ATP is going to come and bind to the head of the myosin. So, when ATP has come and bound to the head of the myosin, because of the intrinsic ATPase activity, the ATP is broken down or it is hydrolyzed immediately into a ADP and a high energy phosphate. But the thing to remember here is that the ADP and the high energy phosphate are still attached to the head of the myosin. That's why such a kind of hydrolysis is called as an incomplete hydrolysis. So, when this incomplete hydrolysis occurs, what is going to happen here is that here you are seeing there is some change which has happened. So, this cross bridge which was in this position initially, it has become more perpendicular to the body of the myosin. Okay, this position is called as the high energy configuration of the cross bridge or it is also called as the cocked up position of the cross bridge. So, that means the cross bridge was like this. Once the ATP has bound and it has undergone a partial hydrolysis, the cross bridge has become more perpendicular. So, this is what is called as high energy configuration or it is also called as the cocked up position. Now, simultaneously, if a skeletal muscle contraction is desired, what is going to happen? There is going to be the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, this calcium is going to come and bind to what is called as the troponin C. There is a molecule which is called as troponin which is having three portions, troponin I, troponin T and troponin C. Troponin I is the one which is attached to the actin. Troponin T is the one which is attached to the tropomyosin and troponin C is the one which is going to bind to the calcium. Remember that one molecule of troponin C can bind to the four molecules of calcium. So, once calcium comes and binds to the troponin C, there will be a conformational change in the troponin C. And we all know that this troponin is also attached to the tropomyosin. And what is the role of this troponin-tropomyosin complex is that they are covering the active binding sites on the actin molecule. So, these are the sites. Once if they are uncovered, the head of the myosin is going to go and bind to them. Or we can also say that the head of the cross bridge is going to go and bind to them. So, they are keeping the skeletal muscle in a relaxed position. That's why troponin and tropomyosin together are called as the relaxing proteins of the muscle. So, when calcium comes and binds to the troponin C, there is a conformational change which occurs in the entire troponin molecule because of which the tropomyosin uncovers or it is moved laterally so that the active binding sites on the actin molecule are uncovered. So, once the active binding sites on the actin molecule are uncovered, this high energy configuration of the cross bridge head that is going to go and attach to that actin molecule. So, once there is an attachment of the head of this cross bridge to the actin molecule, what is going to happen is again there is going to be a conformational change in the head of the myosin or the head of the cross bridge and this head of the cross bridge is going to tilt towards the center of the sarcomere or we can also say that the head is going to tilt towards the arm. But now the head is attached to the actin. So, when it is tilting towards this side, what is going to happen is it is going to pull the actin molecule or the thin filament towards the center of the sarcomere. And this process is a very important process and this is what is called as the power stroke. This is what is called as the power stroke. And the prior process wherein the energized head had bound to the actin molecule is what is called as the cross-linking of 
cross bridges cross linking of the cross bridges that is the cross bridges are now linked to the actin as soon as the cross bridge is linked to the active binding sites on the actin again some conformational change occurs in the head of the cross bridge because of which the cross bridge tilts towards the center of the sarcomere or it is going to also we can say it is tilting towards the arm of the cross bridge so when it tilts it is also pulling the thin filament towards the center of the sarcomere this is what is called as power stroke and the power stroke is the one which is responsible for sliding of the thin filament over the thick filament so once this occurs what is going to happen is there is going to be the release of adp as well as the release of the high energy phosphate so this what is occurring here is there is going to be a complete hydrolysis of the atp okay so once there is complete hydrolysis of the atp next what is going to happen is now the myosin head is free of atp so now what happens is a fresh atp comes and binds to the head of the myosin or i can also say the head of the cross bridge so the binding of the atp to the head of the cross bridge does two things one is it is going to detach the head of the cross bridge with the actin second thing is it is going to bring back the cross bridge back to the low energy configuration if you remember when atp was bound to the cross bridge head and atp got hydrolyzed into adp and a high energy phosphate what had happened is the cross bridge had gone perpendicular more perpendicular that was called as a high energy configuration or it was also called as a cocked up position now once the atp has come and attached and still the atp's activity has not come in and the atp is not hydrolyzed at this point what is going to happen there is going to be detachment of the head with the actin and also what is going to happen is the cross bridge is going to come back to the low energy configuration and again what is going to happen the same thing is going to repeat atp undergoes partial hydrolysis and the cross bridge will get again up perpendicular and it will have a high energy configuration and if the skeletal muscle contraction is required or if it is desired then again calcium is released again it binds to the troponin c and again the same cycle is going to continue so this is what is the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction so two very important points here one is linking of the cross bridges to the head of the myosin second is the power stroke what is power stroke power stroke is tilting of the myosin head towards the center of the sarcomere or towards the cross bridge arm so that is what is causing the sliding of the thin filament over the thick filament okay so now next let's understand as to what are all the changes which are taking place in the sarcomere when there is contraction it's always good to write this point also in your examination so you already know the structure of the sarcomere so what are all the changes a band is constant h zone has completely disappeared the i band is also shortening the z lines of the sarcomere they are moving more closer and ultimately what is going to happen is the sarcomere is shortening so why this is occurring is because of the sliding of the thin filaments over the thick filaments so let me just summarize the complete events so when a skeletal muscle contraction is required or desired what is going to happen is there is going to be release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum then once this calcium is released it is going to bind to the troponin c there is going to be a conformational change in the entire troponin molecule and this causes the tropomyosin molecule to move away from the actin binding site uncovering the active binding sites on the actin now atp is attached to the head of the myosin atp undergoes what is called as the partial hydrolysis that means adp and phosphate are still attached to the head of the cross bridges this causes energized position or also called as the cocked up position of the myosin cross bridges that is they become more perpendicular now the active binding sites on the actin are also uncovered so this causes linking of this cross bridge head to the actin molecule so once the myosin head is attached to the actin molecule again there is going to be some conformational change in the head of the myosin and this myosin is going to move head of the myosin is going to move towards the center of the sarcomere or towards the arm is what we say so that is going to result in the generation of the power stroke which is causing the sliding of the thin filaments over the thick filaments now after this power stroke what is going to happen is the atp undergoes complete hydrolysis there is a release of adp and a high energy phosphate so now the atp binding site on the myosin is free again atp comes and binds to the head of the myosin now this is going to cause detachment of the cross bridge and the cross bridge of the myosin is coming back to the low energy configuration so this is what you are supposed to write if you are asked regarding the skeletal muscle contraction in your exams if this video is helpful for you do share this video among your friends like this video and do subscribe to my channel thanks a lot for watching